Please, Ruben, please tell me what happened. We were at Upper Pierce Reservoir, and this area is where it happened. I was with my friends having a picnic and some art jamming. One of my friends suddenly noticed that there were a few monkeys that started to come out of the forest. Quite quickly, it expanded to around 15 to 20 monkeys. We really started to panic. All of us got up and huddled together in a circle. One of my friends had a deck chair with him. He took it and started to swing it towards some of the monkeys. Well, after a few minutes, they decided to go away. So we quickly packed up our stuff so that yeah, we could leave the area in case they decided to come back. Macaques have a bad reputation because of the urban behaviour. The buffer between the forest and residential areas or commercial areas is actually very, very small. So from time to time, when they venture out, they will go into residential estate. They will want to go into people's house to get food. We receive calls regarding sightings every day. When we have this kind of calls, we will actually go down and let them know how to prevent this kind of incident from happening again. My name is Joe. Um, I'm from the wildlife management team of uh, ACRES. Forests are being cleared to create residential pockets. So with all these residential areas, we are getting closer to nature and the animals will be attracted to these green spaces. So sooner or later, we all are going to encounter wild animals like monkeys. We realise that we need to raise awareness. Without awareness, a lot of people panic when they see wild animals. So that's when we started this wildlife management team with Joe in there to educate and empower the community. So long-tailed macaque is just a species, but they are all monkeys. They are like us. You are an individual, you have your personality. They do also. And you can see how they take care of each other. And there are some who are just naughty. These animals are actually very shy. And they will try to keep their distance. But what happens when someone gives an animal food? They will associate human with food. So naturally, they will approach humans. All this conditioning and different interactions will eventually lead to human-wildlife conflict. Human-wildlife conflict can result in injury to both parties. A lot of things can go wrong. Well, we were just informed that our rescue team rescued a, a long-tailed mechanic, which is badly injured. Uh, it looks like there was a friction against the bone. Friction. This tissue around the arm and the leg completely gone. So the uh, chances of survival in the wild is probably close to zero. For welfare reasons and to prevent her from suffering further in the wild, we will euthanize her. Something like this would probably be a road traffic accident. So she probably got dragged on a road on one side. It's actually very sad. This is an example of human-wildlife conflict, the consequences of food pollution. We encounter many such cases where the monkey will actually associate the vehicle with food and then when vehicles approach, they will approach the vehicle for food. And if the driver doesn't slow down, doesn't stop, it will hit the monkey and end up losing a life. All this can be prevented. We just need to stop feeding wild animals. Recently, this species was uplisted as a vulnerable species. That means we have lesser monkeys in the world. So we have to protect these monkeys. Protecting macaques is also important for us. They are very important seed dispersers in the forest. So without them, we won't have a healthy forest. Then we won't have a good reservoir which will affect our water sources at some point. For an everyday Singaporean, there is one key thing that you can do. 
just empower yourself with the knowledge on what to do, what not to do when you come across monkeys. It's to basically deter them from coming close. If they come uh, near you, all you need to do is uh, stay calm and then just move along. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're going to go towards the monkey, right? Yeah. And then he's in your path. What you can do is clap, yeah. you know? You, you, you slowly approach, uh, he's looking, looking or not looking, just so usually move. if I clap, they will go somewhere else See, This is what they do, they will just move away. Okay. And then the, your path is clear already. Okay, I can try. <laughs> yeah. I was quite nervous when I saw so many macaques. Even though I think maybe I'm still a bit scared, I think if we can respect their space, we can learn to live together in society rather than to have all this fear and maybe aggression towards each other. Our mission is to really create a compassionate society. We believe that animals can feel, just like you and I, so we hope that we will also create a society who is kinder, making kinder choices, uh, keeping animals in mind. The animals will be conditioned by our actions. If we do our part, they will stay foraging in the forest. They can find food in the forest, there's abundant food in the forest. That's what I hope to see in the near future that we are still able to observe the wild animals in the wild, in their habitat, naturally, behaving naturally. Coexistence is definitely possible.